Good afternoon, Red Bud Student Ministry. I just wanted to talk to you guys for a minute. Just take about 10 minutes of your time. Uh, you know we're still here. We're still doing stuff at the church. Uh, we miss all of you very much. We want you to be um, here with us. Uh, joining in on RSM. You know, playing Nine Square. Uh, just enjoying some time. Small groups and videos and everything else that we do upstairs. Snacks, definitely. we got to have our snacks. But just bear with me for a minute. Um... I just want to give you a, a short devotional, if you will. A, a, it's a very short message. Um, anyway, where I'm going to be reading out of is Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, it, it's verses 10 through 20. So um, it, it's I'm probably going to take one verse out of there for the most part. But I want to talk to you. During this time, things seem a little bit confused, I know. Things seem kind of messed up. But this is a perfect time. I mean, a perfect time for us to start um, getting back. In our relationship with God and I want to tell you you know we've been talking about the basics in, in uh, Wednesday night but this is one of the things that is one of the most powerful tools that you can have in your arsenal as far as spiritual things go so um, you, you know what it feels like to be uh, you know without your Wi-Fi connection or if your phone has been shut off and you're kind of out of communication well, you may be feeling that way right now. Instead of having a phone or, you know, our iPads or anything like that shut off. Um, I'm talking about, you know, being shut off from God. So we uh, will take time to be on our phone and our iPads and, uh, you know, we'll be on YouTube and everything like that. But have we spent time to be with the Lord? Have we really spent time with Him? So when you cut off your Wi-Fi or your, your phone gets cut off. <laughs> Sometimes we're grounded. Ooh. Anyway, you have no communication. And, and that kind of makes you feel left out, cut off from the world. And, and that's what it's like. If, if you're not doing this next thing that I'm going to be talking about, then you're going to be feeling cut off from the Lord. Um, and that's prayer. If we don't have prayer in our lives, then we're going to be cut off. It's like our, our, our lifelines being shut off. You know, the satellite that serves our, our phone is now gone. Um, we don't have service anymore. Uh, we haven't paid our bill, if you will. But um, there's other things in our communication that we forget about, too. Um, everybody's pretty well familiar with encryption. You know, that secret message that goes across or that, that very sensitive information like credit cards and uh, debit cards. And it goes across the Internet. And they, they encrypt them into a language that no one can steal and understand. And then on the other end, there's a program that deciphers that. Well, if we're not in prayer, we're going to have that same feeling with the Bible. Um, we're, we're, going, we're going to be looking at this Bible and we're going to be thinking... I don't understand this at all. Okay. So what I'm going to be talking about here in a minute is also going to be talking about that. And the third thing that this is going to take care of as well is, you know, we're watching these, you know, dramas on TV, live dramas like cops or something like that. And they always show the person with the fuzzy face, you know, all, all blurred out. And, and, you know, that's kind of how we are too. Without this next thing that I'm going to be talking about, um, we don't see God's work around us. We won't see God's work through us because everything's going to be all fuzzy and blurred out. So let's talk about that for a minute. And what I'm going to be looking at is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 says this, Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 18 and and see that's what I want to talk about we pray in the spirit at all times praying is just talking simply everyday language to God your language uh, nothing fancy no long words nothing big nothing impressive don't use all that expensive 14 syllable words because you're not going to impress God what God wants is is your broken, humbled heart before Him. He wants your broken, humble heart before Him. He doesn't want anything 
beyond that. He wants you to be talking to him openly, from the heart, from inside the heart. You're his child. He wants to hear from you. I'm his child. He wants to hear from me. So that's what we need to do. We need to talk to him normally, like we're talking right now. Um, and that's what prayer is to him. Prayer is for us. It's talking normally to him with an open heart. Um, he wants to speak to you. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to spend a minute with you. He wants to spend 10 minutes with you. Whatever you're going to give him, he will take and use. So why should we pray? And why should we ask the Spirit to pray? Pray in the Spirit at all times for every occasion is how we communicate with God. The Holy Spirit, that free gift that we gain when we trust Christ as our Savior, it, it is that line coming back on online, that Wi-Fi, that connection point with, I don't know how many gigabytes of communication going through it, but it's a full-blown communication. Your, your, your cell phone bill has been paid. Your Wi-Fi connection is strong. And now you're in full communication with him. But that takes time. You know, we need to have that quiet time together. We need to go in there and, and, and uh, find a quiet place. Bring your Bible with you. Take five or ten minutes to read a little bit of it. Maybe even one verse to concentrate on. And then pray to him. Tell him what you're thinking. Tell him what's on your heart. And then here's the real thing you need to do. And then wait quietly for an answer. Wait quietly to, to, for his response. Take, take a minute and just quietly listen. And maybe the next day, take two minutes. Don't look at your phone. Don't look at a text. Close your eyes and listen for him to speak to you. And that may not happen the first day or the second day or the first week. But if you trust in him and continue to read his word and continue to pray to him and continue to take that time to be still and listen to him he will communicate with you it's our greatest spiritual weapon and right now guys we're going against a spiritual test and i'm not saying that the coronavirus or anything like that is is really this, this great th thing of god getting our attention although it can be what I'm saying is our attitude towards it is what's going to make the difference. If we're in God's word, if we're spending time praying with him through the spirit, if we spend time concentrating on what the spirit's leading us to do from day to day and hour to hour, minute to minute, then our attitude is going to be different towards what's going on around us in this world. And that's why I mean that the fuzzy faces are going to start disappearing, okay? And you're going to actually see God's work around you. And you're going to join into his work. You're going to see God's working through you. And you're going to enjoy that time being with God and him working through you. You're going to uh, now erase all the encryption going on with this. And the stuff that God wants you to read and understand, you're going to start reading and understand because you're asking the Spirit to teach you as you go through the Word. So, in spiritual warfare, and Ephesians, you know, chapter 6, 10 through 20, is talking about God's armor. I mean, God's armor, everything about God's armor. And, and, and it's, it's, um, it's a powerful area to be reading in the Bible. And so read that whole paragraph. Chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. So you're going to be talking about putting on a piece of God's armor uh, so you can resist the enemy. And right now, the enemy is going to use what's going on around you, okay, to, to do things to you and make you doubt him and doubt your what God's trying to do through you. So put on God's armor to resist that. You want to put on the belt of truth, it talks about, and the armor of God's righteousness. And for shoes, you get to put on the piece that comes from the good news, the gospel, you know, knowing 
you know, the, the Bible, his scripture is the good news that we're going to be reading and, and sharing. Um, the shield of faith that stops fiery arrows of the devil, it tells you. And put on the salvation as your helmet because our salvation is, is huge. In fact, that's why we get the spirit in the first place. And the verse right after that talks about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the God. So we need to pray away every distraction that we have right now in the world. Uh, we, we need to put our faith in God. Uh, you know, when we go into this quiet time, you know, put away the Netflix, put away your phone, put away your texting, Snapchat, YouTube, Facebook, Messenger. This is, prayer time is going to be the messenger that you're going to have with God. And listen for him to respond. Give it some time. Try to be intimate with him. You know everything about your phone because you spend a lot of time on it. What do you know about God? You need to spend more time with him. Um, let's go ahead and pray. And that's all the time I'm going to take at the moment. And I miss you guys. Love you guys. Can't wait till we come back together. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just I pray for these students right now. That wherever they are, across Lubbock and across this world... That, that they uh, are spending time with you and they'll find time to spend with you. That Lord, allow the Spirit, Holy Spirit to teach them, to lead them, to guide them. And Lord, give them the strength to do so. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Now, you're going to be with your parents or your, your siblings and everything like that. And everything's going to be crazy for a while. Let the things around you not affect what's going on inside you. In fact... Better yet, start reaching to the people around you, your parents, your siblings, your friends, and, and, and give them encouragement. Um, help them. Help around the house. I know being closed in every once in a while is going to be a little bit rough for right now. So uh, Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 10 tells us, you know, when we have an opportunity, we should do good to everyone, um, especially to to our Christian brothers and sisters, and that's in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. So this is an opportunity for you to go in and help your parents with where, whatever's going on. I mean, you know, go in there and say, you know, I, I want to help you wash the dishes or take out the trash. And, and, and then when your parents wake back up from fainting, the, you know, you guys can communicate that you just want to help them because you're thinking of them instead of yourself. Wouldn't that just freak them out for a little bit? Anyway, love you guys. We'll see you later. And uh, we'll come back together and have fun together soon. Talk to you later.